Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar, and I hope this finds you all doing well. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, move right into interpreting discrimination, the index of discrimination. So uh, piggybacking on to the last video where we, we described how to actually calculate the index of discrimination, uh, let's talk about what value we get. So when we calculate the index of discrimination, remember we, we find the high-performing group, the low performing group, and that tends to be the top and bottom 27% perspectively. Um, and then we calculate the item difficulty uh, for each item for those groups, and then we subtract the um, the from so we subtract the low performing difficulty from the high performing difficulty, and then the number that we get is the discrimination. And so the next question is, well, what does that mean? Well, first of all, our range for the discrimination, when we calculate it, the range will go from negative 1 all the way up to positive 1. That's the range that we're looking at. And uh, what, what does that mean? Well, first of all, let's talk about what is generally considered a good question, a, a question that discriminates very nicely between the high performers and the low performers. And a good value generally tends to be 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. So if we calculate the discrimination for a specific item and we get somewhere in the 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 range, this tends to tell us that that question is doing a reasonably good job of differentiating the high-performing students from the low-performing students. Now, the, the higher we get, the closer we get to 1, the more discriminating that question is between high and low performers. And the, the further away from 1 we get, the less discriminating that question is between high and low performers. So if uh, you are looking for a magical unicorn, Okay, a magical unicorn of a question would have a discrimination of 1, and that is perfect discrimination. It's perfectly discriminating between high and low performers, and this is, is pretty much just a magical unicorn zebra of a, of a question where you, know, you could have a couple of these questions on an exam, and you'd be able to perfectly tell um, who, who's doing well and who isn't with the minimal amount of questions. That's not something we typically see in, in the real world. And so uh, more realistically, the, a range of 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 is what we use to uh, act as a reflection of a, of a decent question. Now, sometimes we can get very low numbers. So numbers that are very poorly discriminating would be a value of 0 to 0 0.2. Okay, what does that mean though? What, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a poor question. Okay, that doesn't automatically mean that if I calculate the discrimination index and it is 0 0.1, that doesn't mean that I throw that question out. What I need to ask is what is, I need to ask myself, what is this, what is this particular quiz or test aiming to do. Because what this means is when I get a very low discrimination, that means that everybody, everybody is performing the same. That means that the high and low performing students are either getting that question right or getting that question wrong but it is not discriminating between that. And in some cases, we may want to have a test question with a very low index of discrimination. For example, if I want to test a concept that everybody needs to have mastery of, okay, then I would want everyone to get that particular question right. right? That's what I would want to see. I'd want to see the, the low and the high performers get that particular question right. Um, however, if the question is too difficult or too hard to understand, maybe everybody gets it wrong. Or, likewise, if it is too easy, 
then everybody's getting it right. So again, when we get a low score, you have to ask yourself, what, what am I aiming to do with this question? And is it, is it a matter of it's too difficult or written in a way that people don't understand it? Or is it too perhaps too easy? And those are things that you are just going to have to make the decision on. Um, but at least you have some quantitative uh, information to, uh, to go on. Now, occasionally, you may even get a negative score. So a score uh, from you know, negative 1 to up to you know negative 0 0.1 we'll say okay so down in here what does that mean well that is what we call negative discrimination and what happens with a question that is negatively discriminating is that it uh, actually tells us that the poor or the rather the low performers are doing better on that particular question than the high performers. Okay, so our low performing que uh, students are getting that question right, whereas the high performing students are getting that question wrong. That's what we call negative discrimination. Positive discrimination, okay, positive discrimination is di is differentiating between high and low not necessarily low and high um, this is particular so when we run into this type of situation this generally means that that particular item is, is something went seriously wrong there's some sort of uh, linguistic disaster if you will surrounding that item and it needs to be replaced rewritten or heavily modified because uh, something really interesting is going on there. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and cut it off here. And now that we've gone through uh, difficulty, we've gone through discrimination, and uh, differentiating between high and low performing students and questions uh, that can tell us about high and low performing uh, students, we will go ahead and um, actually what I'll do is before that, if you give me a minute, is just run through a couple of examples. I'm glad I remembered to do that. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I just wanted to um, do a little practical exercise to make sure that uh, the concepts are solidified. So let's say that I have given a quiz, and that quiz has three items on it. I've identified my high performers. I've identified my low performers. And I've calculated the difficulty of these items for the high-performing groups. And group rather in the low performing group. So let's look at item one here. So item one has a difficulty of 0 0.8 for the high performers and 0 0.3 for the low performers. So I'll go ahead and calculate the index of discrimination here. 0 0.8 less 0 0.3 gives me 0 0.5. So the, the index of discrimination is 0 0.5 for that particular item. And that falls into this good range here. So this is generally a question that is, is good at discriminating between high and low performers. Okay, moving on to item number two. So my high performers got 0 0.4. My low performers got 0 0.3. I'll go ahead and uh, subtract that. And that gives me an index of discrimination of 0 0.1. Well, that is right here, okay? That is a question that is poorly discriminating. That means everybody is more or less doing the same on this question. Then you have to ask yourself, well, is this question too easy? Is it too hard? Is it poorly written? Or do I want everybody to get that one right? Would I expect everyone to perform the same on that? Because it is a fundamental uh, type of knowledge that I'm, that I'm um, assessing. You have to make that call. And then finally, uh, the third item on this exam, the high performers got a 0 0.2, the low performers got a 0 0.6, so I'll subtract that, and that gives me an index discrimination of negative 0 0.4. And so what does that put me? Well, that puts me right here with negative discrimination, and that tells me that the low performing students are doing better on that item 
than the high performing students and generally speaking something has gone very wrong with that item and you need to take a close look at it replace it modify it rewrite it what have you okay now i'll go ahead and cut it off here guys hopefully this made sense and hopefully you're finding this series of videos uh, very helpful all right take care and as always thanks for hanging in there